收到通知。I received a notice that my salary would be reduced by 30 percent, and there would be no bonus at the end of the year. I'm 38 years old, have a bachelor's degree, and engineer and construction certificates. I have been working steadily for more than 10 years, but the company has no projects to do now, and I have nothing to do. The boss said we should tide over the difficulties together. I won't choose to resign because the entire industry is like this now, and it won't be much better if I go to find a job again. The economic slowdown in China has brought challenges. To the field of education, recently a public high school in Lushan County, Pingdingshan City, Henan Province, posted job openings for five teachers, offering a salary of less than 1,000 yuan, about 140 U.S. dollars, sparking heated discussions. A staff member of the school stated to the media. The recruitment process followed regular procedures. When a position is vacant at the school, we report it to the education bureau, which then issues recruitment notices. The salaries are determined by the school's leadership. The local education bureau also responded, confirming that the recruitment positions and salaries were accurate. A well-known blogger commented, "Is this not a joke? Even if it's an undergraduate intern, a salary of a few hundred yuan a month would already be ridiculous. If a formal position for a public high school teacher is offered at such a low salary, it's outrageous." Another netizen said, "High school teachers require a bachelor's degree, and the work is very demanding. Many high school teachers have to work from early morning until late at night, which is exhausting." If the monthly salary is less than 1,000 yuan, the input and output are completely disproportionate. It's difficult to survive on, let alone support a family, buy a house, get married, or have children. This is simply recruiting volunteers. Henan adjusted its minimum wage standards province-wide starting January 1st, 2024. The monthly minimum wage standard is 2,100 yuan for Category One regions, 2,000 yuan for Category Two regions, and 1,800 yuan for Category Three regions. This indicates that the salary for high school teachers in Henan is below the minimum wage standard and constitutes openly illegal recruitment. Teachers in China are seen as a group with stable incomes, but after the pandemic, China's economy has continued to decline. Local governments have fallen into financial difficulties, and society faces huge financial challenges. It is common for teachers to be owed wages. Recently, many parents in Kaifeng, Henan, gathered at the gate of a primary school to protest the withholding of teachers' salaries for up to six months. The children did not have classes for four days since the start of the school year. The news briefly trended online. Parents in Kaifeng revealed that due to the owed wages, teachers didn't show up, so the students watched cartoons or movies, and the school cafeteria did not provide meals for the students. A joint declaration signed by 34 teachers from Sanmenxia City Province circulated online. They pressed their fingerprints on the document to signify they had been working at high intensity for four years, but their positions had not been formalized. They received no contracts, wages, social security, medical insurance, or housing provident fund. Despite multiple complaints to the relevant authorities, no actions have been taken, leading them to go on hunger strike at the education bureau. Prior to this, hundreds of teachers from the number one and number two high schools in Luoyang staged sit-ins at their respective school gates. The protest was sparked by the fact that their wages have been overdue for several months, and they were barely making ends meet. In fact, the impact of China's economic downturn is widespread, affecting various sectors across the country. Have you noticed it yet? This year's salary reduction in Changzhou, Jiangsu Province. Has been very serious beyond imagination. After work resumed last year, many companies did mass layoffs, and the income of those who remain has also dropped a lot. Many friends who work in banks used to have no worries about their monthly income, but now they aren't secure anymore. The market is sluggish. It's not just Saturdays. I have to work overtime on Sundays, and it's difficult to sign customers. For most migrant workers in Changzhou, it is already great to have a job where wages are paid on time. What should we do if this continues? The current economic situation in China is not optimistic, and there are people everywhere who cannot find jobs. Many people who go to work in other places have returned to their hometowns because they can't find work. Layoffs and salary cuts have become a norm. Many people have problems affording food. I can say that the situation has not happened in the last 20 years. If the economy becomes worse year by year in the future, the harm to the people will be great. Someone revealed on social media that the Design Institute where they work has adjusted its salary structure, cutting the basic salary by half.
According to a company notice, in light of the industry situation and the company's current operational status, the company's management has decided to adjust the original salary system starting from February 2024 in order to help the company survive challenges. The Post claimed that as early as August 2023, the company had already implemented a 10% across-the-board salary cut, on top of which employees who underperformed in the first half of 2023 were encouraged to resign. Year-end bonuses are a crucial source of income for many professionals. According to an annual survey conducted by the recruitment website jowpin.com, among respondents who had received year-end bonuses, 68% said that their 2023 year-end bonus accounted for 10-30% to 30 of their annual income. The removal of bonuses dramatically reduces overall income. According to Voice of America, Mr. Chu, who works at a biotechnology company in Wuhan, said, Forget about the year-end bonus for us. It's a zero bonus. We didn't get one this year, and we don't know if we will in the future. If our small company can survive without closing down, I'll be grateful. Mr. Chu also said that 2023 was very frustrating for him. The COVID-19 lockdown meant many business activities couldn't take place, which we accepted, but the entire year of 2023 was bad for the company. Not only did our salaries not increase, they decreased for everyone, which was unexpected. This gloominess is related to issues in industries like real estate, finance, and consumer goods. Zhang Bin, who works in advertising sales at a newspaper in Guangzhou, said, our income has decreased by about 30%. Previously, income was based on performance, but in 2023, it was based on profit. For example, if we brought in a client for a 1 million yuan advertising deal and the profit was only 700,000 yuan, our commission would remain the same at 10%, which means only 70,000. Ms. Deng, who works at a study abroad agency in Guangzhou, mentioned that her husband, a civil servant, had his salary reduced in 2023. Said, with all the benefits included, the reduction was about 20%. The Guangzhou government is also short of money. Data from Jiaoping.com shows the prevalence of salary cuts. 32.3% of white-collar workers experienced salary cuts in 2023, higher than 31.8% in 2022 and 26.8% in 2021, with 11.6% experiencing cuts of over 20%. Amidst China's economic downturn and ongoing deflation, job opportunities are dwindling, forcing many Chinese to seek lower-paying jobs after being laid off. According to the Wall Street Journal, in Beijing, Kang Dechang had worked in the Chinese media industry for nearly 20 years as a marketing executive. He worked at a media company specializing in railway travel until it closed down due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Currently, the 41-year-old Kong manages a dormitory at a local university, earning only about 500 USD per month after taxes, which is roughly 20% of his peak income. He also works part-time at a coffee shop in the evenings, earning about $3.80 per hour. Kong stated that he took the dormitory management job in September 2023 because he had to repay a $770 monthly mortgage. Before that, he had been looking for a full-time job for several months without success. While everyone wants a high-paying job, with the economy declining, he had to settle for less. According to CNA, a man named Zhang, who works in human resources in Shanghai, started job hunting at the end of February 2023. He submitted over a thousand resumes for positions in Suzhou, Hangzhou, and Shanghai. He only received interview invitations from companies in Shanghai and was ultimately hired by one in June of the same year. Zhang's previous job was at an AI-related internet company, where he earned a monthly salary of 25,000 RMB, about 3,400 US dollars, plus commercial insurance. His current job, however, pays only 16,000 RMB, about 2,200 US dollars per month, without social insurance. Zhang said, although my position has improved, my salary has decreased. And shortly after starting, he faced a 10% salary cut from the state-owned enterprise. In comparison to his job search in September 2020, Zhang noted that the number of job postings related to human resources had decreased from over 40 pages to just 14 pages by February 2023, even after lowering his salary expectations. Chinese youth are also facing challenges of shrinking salaries and declining educational value. A senior manager named Wu told Voice of America that even in the Yangtze River Delta, a key economic region in China, their current employment situation for young people is not ideal. 
Wu stated that since the COVID-19 pandemic, China's economic recovery has been weak, leading to salary cuts in recent months and even a depreciation of university degrees. Traditionally prestigious universities, such as the top-ranking 985 Project and 211 Project, are experiencing a devaluation of degrees. While graduates from these universities may not have trouble finding jobs, their starting salaries have been cut by at least 30 percent, dropping from over 10,000 RMB per month before the pandemic to around 6,000 to 7,000 RMB per month now. Wu cited examples of resumes he had received, many of which were from research and developed professionals who had been recently laid off by big companies like Alibaba in 2023. These professionals, who previously had million yuan salaries, are now accepting a 500,000 yuan annual salary only to have a job to support their families and pay their mortgages. There are still many candidates available for recruitment as they are all tied down by their mortgage payments. Six months later, on January 17th, the National Bureau of Statistics resumed the publication of the unemployment rate for young people aged 16 to 24, optimizing the statistical method and excluding 62 million students. The unemployment rate for this group of young people dropped from the 20% range in the first half of 2023 to 14.9%, a decrease of 6 percentage points. This led Chinese netizens to question the authorities' data optimization practices. Beijing University Economics Associate Professor Zhang Dandan estimated that the actual youth unemployment rate in March last year could have been as high as 46.5%. Wu, who has first-hand experience in recruiting in the Yangtze River Delta region, also said that the unemployment rate figures are likely to be underestimated. Wu mentioned that he had seen many young people who have already graduated come for interviews without their diplomas. Upon inquiry, he discovered that schools were unwilling to issue diplomas, stating that graduation is only counted when you find a job. In other words, if you haven't found a job, you haven't graduated, and thus these individuals are not counted as unemployed. Mr. Li, a university teacher in a southeastern province and coastal city, has observed a similar trend. He said that students majoring in hot industries like artificial intelligence have relatively easier times finding jobs, but in niche industries like interior design and architecture, there are very few students getting hired. In the face of difficulties in finding employment and unsatisfactory salaries, about 20% of graduates from well-off families choose to lie flat, meaning they stay at home, rely on their parents for support, eat at home, and may even spend their days playing video games. Lee said they might say they're preparing for postgraduate exams, but they don't have any plans for the future. Furthermore, in the Chinese job market, there is another phenomenon where people over the age of 35 are facing employment difficulties, making it harder for them to find jobs. A 35-year-old mother of two, who had just started working for a month, found herself unemployed and is currently continuing her job search. As a newly unemployed mother of two, I have been working hard to find a job these past two days. I asked a supermarket near my home, and they are hiring hourly workers. The hourly wage is 7 yuan, about 1 US dollar. The hourly wage for experienced workers is 8 yuan. The working hours are from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The salary is too low. It's so hard to find a job now. Today I interviewed for a job with a monthly salary of 4,000 yuan, but I was rejected for a ridiculous reason. I was too old. Nowadays, many jobs require you to be under 35. Who does my generation offend? Not only do we have to bear mortgage and car loans, we have to take care of the elderly and take care of children. Under this pressure, adults can collapse in just an instant. It's not just technical jobs, even ordinary labor positions have age restrictions. A supermarket in China recently posted an advertisement seeking cashiers aged 18 to 30, while another upscale chain, Panda, also set 30 as the maximum age limit for applicants, sparking widespread discussion online. Some netizens commented that those over 30 are no longer wanted even by supermarkets, implying that the advertisement signals the end for those over 30. Chinese citizens have taken to the internet to share their experiences, with some as young as 33 having searched for a job for three years, and others at just 29 already dismissed three times. These poignant posts reflect a bitter reality in Chinese society. The bleak job market has led to the worsening of the 35-year-old curse in China. Initially stemming from social media rumors describing the dismissal of older employees by large tech companies, the phenomenon has now become more common. Many online recruitment notices explicitly specify that applicants must not exceed this age.
One Weibo user commented, It used to be difficult for those over 35 to find a job, but now it's become 30? Meanwhile, the retirement age is being extended. What are people supposed to do during that time in between? Taiwanese business people working in China also feel the impact of China's economic weakness. Officials from Taiwan's Mainland Affairs Council pointed out that Taiwanese businessmen have reported a general decline of 30% to 50% in their manufacturing performance in China recently, and they fear that they will only be able to maintain basic operations this year. Furthermore, the number of businessmen stranded in China due to business failures and financial difficulties has surged. Chiu Chui Chang, vice chairman and general secretary of the Taiwan Strait Exchange Foundation, revealed that the foundation assisted a total of 102 stranded Taiwanese to return to Taiwan last year, the first time the number has exceeded 100 and the highest in years. Li Kuo Cheng, an assistant professor at Central Police University in Taiwan, noted that rising unemployment globally can challenge government legitimacy, typically leading to electoral changes in democracies. Despite China's one-party system, authorities still feel pressure to maintain stability, potentially leading to stricter control to prevent public dissident over economic issues.